Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about random sampling of an unknown population. So we take a random sample of that population, we compute sample statistics like the sample mean and sample variance, and hopefully we can say something about that larger population from properties of that random sample. We've already looked at the sample mean X bar extensively. So we know that the sample mean X bar is an unbiased estimate of the population mean mu. And we also know how the variance of X bar behaves, for example, with the size of the sample and things like that. But we haven't looked very much at the sample variance sigma hat squared. We don't really know where this comes into play. For example, does sigma hat squared also provide an estimate of some quantity we care about is sigma hat squared related to the, the population variance sigma squared. What else can this tell me about the variance of X bar, the population variance, things like that. So just like to analyze the sample mean, we looked at its expected value and variance. We can do the same thing with sigma hat squared. So we're going to start by looking at the expected value of sigma hat squared, and we're going to see what is it an, un an unbiased estimate of? What is, it, what is it estimating? And we're going to use this fact here that we can write down sigma hat squared in terms of a sum over my random variables xi and x bar. So I'm going to use the second formula here. This is 1 over little n, the size of my sample, times uh, the sum over every element in my sample. Uh, x i minus x bar, the sample mean quantity squared, equals 1 over m sum uh, of x i squared minus x bar squared. Okay, this is actually the expression I want here. So let's just double check that I didn't mess anything up. Um, this is correct. And we're going to take this sum and plug it in to this expected value here. Okay. So I know that I can pop this constant out of the expected value, so it's going to be 1 over n, expected value of this sum. And the expected value of a sum is the sum of all of those expected values. So it's the sum of a bunch of expected values. Uh, this is i equals 1 to n. And it's the sum of the expected values of all of these quantities of uh, x i squared minus x bar squared. Good. And of course I can write this as the expected value of xi squared minus the expected value of x bar squared. I can split this up into even smaller pieces. So we're going to use a property that you know we should be really comfortable with that was the definition of variance actually down here. The variance of a random variable x is the expectation of, of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. This is different than this. This is the expected value of x, it's, it's mean, squared. This is the expected value of the random variable x squared. These are, these are different quantities, and this is a formula for the variance. We used this before, okay? So we're going to use that to get an expression. Each of these is an expected value of an x squared. So each of these we're going to write as a variance plus expected value of quantity x, quantity squared. You'll see when I write it out, okay? So this equals, uh, I'm going to give myself a tiny bit more room, 1 over n, sum i equals 1 to little n, of a bunch of expected values. Now, the expected value of xi squared, again, is the variance of xi, is var xi plus the expected value of xi quantity squared, that's this term here, that's the single expected value of xi squared is variance of xi plus expected value of xi quantity squared, minus this thing here, minus, same exact thing, variance var of x bar plus the expected value of x bar quantity squared. Okay, now why am I making, it seems like I'm making my life a lot more complicated here, but the nice thing is that I know I have an expression for the expected value of any of my random variables. I have an expected value of x bar, and I have an expected value, sorry, I have a variance of x bar. I know all three of these quantities, so this is going to be much, much easier to work with. Okay, 
Um, in fact, I also know the variance of x bar. So let, let's actually write down all of the things we know. The variance of any individual sample xi is the population variance because it's sampled from the population. So this is uh, sigma squared. The expected value of any xi is mu. So this is mu quantity squared. This is a mu squared. The variance of x bar, that was a little nastier. For, for finite big N, we have the, this expression for var x, which is uh, sigma squared over little n times our correction factor, 1 minus little n minus 1 over big N minus 1. That's var x bar. We derived that in a few, a few lectures ago, so you can go and you know, check that out. And then the expected value of x bar is, again, the population mean mu. X bar is an unbiased estimate for mu, so expected value of X bar is mu, and if I square that, I get a mu squared. So now I can write down this whole expression here. This equals 1 over n times the sum uh, I equals 1 to little n of these mu's cancel. So I get a sigma squared minus sigma squared over n times 1 minus little n minus 1 over big n minus 1. Okay, and the sum, notice that there's no index in here anymore. Every single term in here has the exact same value, this value here. So the sum over all of this from 1 to n is just n times this. That cancels out that n. And so this is literally just... Um, sigma squared over n times, this guy needs to pick up an n minus 1 minus little n minus 1 over big n minus 1. Now we're just doing algebra. Uh, and that equals sigma squared over n times this correction factor here. Okay, so the expected value of my sample variance is related to my true population variance times you know, some factor that has to do with the sizes of each of these population and sample. So this is really, really interesting. This, this tells me a lot. This means that I could build an unbiased estimator of my population variance by essentially taking my sample variance and multiplying it by the inverse factor here. That's really, really useful. And in fact, I think I'm going to, um, to write that down immediately, and maybe I'll do it in blue. So if I look at um, the expected value of, I'm going to just invert this thing somehow. Um, yeah, of little n times big N minus 1 over big N times little n minus 1 times sigma hat squared. You can convince yourself, just plug this, plug this in and you'll see everything cancels. The expected value of this is our population variance, our population variance, which means that this quantity here is an unbiased estimate. This is an unbiased estimate of sigma squared. Remember, we're trying to estimate things about the population, like its mean and its variance, from things we can actually measure from this smaller random sample. And this says that if I have my sample variance, if I multiply it by this correction, I get a good estimate of my population variance. So this quantity can be useful to estimate the variance of my population if I adjust by this correction factor. And similarly, remember we were looking at the variance of x bar. So var x bar, uh, that's a really important quantity because it tells us how, uh, how kind of accurate our, our estimate of population mean is if we use the sample mean. So small variance means this is a very good estimate of mu. The variance of x bar um, could be written as sigma hat squared uh, over little n minus 1 times 1 minus... And again, you can con convince yourself... Um, that this is also true. This is just sigma hat squared times uh, this quantity here. Now, remember, we already had an expression for this variance. We said it was um, 
sigma squared over little n times one minus little n minus one over big N minus one. We already had, you know, this expression here. But this was in terms of the unknown population variance. If I didn't know that population variance, I couldn't estimate the variation of my sample mean. Here, this is written in terms of something I do have access to. I can calculate this. This is unknown. This I can calculate from my sample. So the sample variance sigma hat squared tells me really, really useful information about the population variance, as long as I multiply it by this inverse factor. And it also tells me something about the variance of my sample mean, which is also very, very useful. Okay, so this is, um, you can kind of convince yourself that these are true, just plug these in and, and, you know, write this out on a piece of paper and make sure you believe it. But this is really useful too. So now we've analyzed the sample mean and the sample variance and related that to important properties of things we care about. Now the only thing we haven't looked at is the variance of the sample variance. That could be interesting too. You could write out you know, a formula for that yourself. That might be a cool homework exercise is, you know, just actually write out the, the variance of sigma hat squared and then try to think about how does that actually relate to quantities you care about. Now, spoiler alert, if sigma hat squared tells me something about the population variance, the variance of sigma hat squared is going to tell me something about how good of an estimate that is, how much spread there is between uh, this estimate and the actual population variance. Okay, thank you.